Before we begin, thank you very much to Boomtox the Boombox. Thank you for coming back to the Patreon campaign. Very much appreciated. Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, no real update on the Patreon. Um, I'm going to shuffle things around so you can still see goals, even after they take them off. I still think that's stupid. But thank you guys for following along. Thank you for the continuous streak that will take me... Uh, I don't want to think about how many more days to get through, but I've still got a backlog. Thanks to you people. All right. We have a brand new capsule line to discuss. This is what a capsule line is for those who've heard me speak the term before and uh, weren't sure what it was. It is a small, small line designed to run for one, maybe two waves as an exclusive thing at a uh, at one particular retailer or another. In this case, it is a Walmart exclusive legacy evolution line called the Toxatron Collection. And the theme of it is actually interesting. Not only is it Generation 2 inspired, but it's intentionally using all of the unreleased G2 decos that we have only seen in trade show samples and artwork that was recovered. So this is like deep. This is a deep cut for Hasbro to do an entire capsule line devoted to. The way I phrased it on Twitter is it is this, it is the most late era botcon energy Hasbro has ever shown. And what I mean by that is much of late botcon exclusives were in this vein. It was stuff that was like it existed as one catalog photo. It existed as one piece of artwork that got recovered. It was very, very obscure stuff getting repaints. And now they're not even exclusive. Like, they're not even like exclusive to a convention. They're just at a Walmart. It's just at a Walmart. So here's the rundown. Here's the rundown. Toxitron Collection, a collection of Transformer robots, has risen out of the toxic sludge swamps of Cybertron. You didn't even know they had toxic sludge swamps on Cybertron, did you? You're learning something today. Toxitron is unleashing radioactive mayhem with a team of toxic warriors, G2-inspired designs. These action figures are inspired by some of the unreleased color designs from the original G2 toy line, featuring bright neon color schemes. These figures will stand out in your collection. Uh, to say the least... To say the least. All right, so that's the general rundown. I love that Toxitron went from a canceled universe toy uh, to he has his own collection. That's a shift. So we didn't get all of the ones that are coming out, but we did get a few. We did get a few. So here we've got the unreleased Autobot Jazz in a very fiery orange and red color scheme. Looks like burning lava just streaking down the road. And straight up, like, accurate to the original art. Like, like, the art didn't even look like the face was painted, so they kept the tones on the face very close to each other. Definitely strikes uh, this, that artwork really well. Uh, G2 Autobot logo right there in the center. Nice to see that. Make a return. Um, what I like about it is the fact that it is, like, well, for one, it's extremely different. It's extremely different, but it's also using some airbrushing that we don't typically get uh, on Transformers these days. So it's actually kind of a cool little deco twist. Also, you eagle-eyed viewers out there will notice that, that shoulder cannon might be a little bit familiar, as is the handgun in his left hand. These are actually accessories taken from the still unreleased Buzzworthy Earth Mode Hound. Uh, why? Because the shoulder accessory is the closest they have at the moment to the rocket launcher G2 Jazz included. So it's a little way of getting a extra detail in there, but it also means he gets an extra gun in the process. So this actually is going to have a decent accessory loadout for a deluxe, a little bit better than we've seen with the with the with that size class these these days. I know it's just a super fascinating figure to do. Um, there's one thing that will that does give me a little grievance here, but uh, we'll get to that here in a bit. I do think it looks cool. I'm not sure if it's one I would grab, but I do like the overall look of it. Uh, that's going to depend. That might be one I wait for to go on sale, because I'm sure it will at some point. Uh, most of the Velocitron did, at least. All right. So, yeah, by the way, the, the box, super toxic looking. <laughs> The bright purples and greens, like an orangish red to the lettering on Transformers. Like, it's a, it's an extreme box. This is definitely radiating 90s, like, Toxic Crusaders energy. 
I, I have Toxic Crusaders on the mind because they just announced a, like a Turtles in Time style beat em up out of nowhere. So all of a sudden, those are back. All right, the next one on the list, Cloud Cover, which doesn't look so toxic and radioactive, but it is still another one of the unreleased Echoes. This one being a light blue ramjet with digital, uh, like digital style camo. Uh, this one does look interesting. I, I do like the overall look of this one because it's definitely a different tone, a different color scheme for a cone head. For a seeker in general, we really don't didn't have a white and light blue seeker uh, going into this. So not a bad one to do. Not a bad one to do. Um, we, we know they're re-releasing some of the cone heads at normal retail, so the, the molds are currently active. So that's uh, no surprise. They would take advantage of that and do a few more. I might have had my fill of that mold. I've got uh, at least seven versions of that mold because I've got all the I've got the seekers, I've got the cone heads, and I've got uh, the G2 Ramjet. I didn't get the I didn't get Sandstorm. Like this would be a, this is going to be a really good counterpart with Sandstorm, especially if they do any of the others. But no, it's not a bad one. It's not a bad one. Again, one that I might pick up on sale. Like a lot of this collection doesn't jump at me, but it's like if the price was right, I might go for it. And I love the idea that its name is Cloud Cover. Now, here's where it gets a little bit iffy for me. When we did Velocitron Wave 2, or when they almost did Velocitron Wave 2, as it turns out, we got Shadow Strip, G2 Drag Strip with a brand new name. And I really kind of wish they kept that convention going. I wish they had turned that jazz into a new character. This is Heat Streak, an unreleased G2 character. You know, at least taking advantage of the fact that, like, this is a brand new thing and brand new decos that have never been out before. Give us a chance to create something new rather than rehash the characters. Uh, they did that with Shadow Strip, and I wish they would do it with all of them, but uh, it seems like most of these are going to keep their original names, which I think is a missed opportunity. But Cloud Cover is not a bad name for a Seeker, so that's not too bad. All right, who else? Oh, oh, yeah, um... The they were, they announced some new uh they announced the, they they officially announced I forgot in the middle of this they announced the official uh the official the official reveal of Thundercracker and Hound for the retro reissue line. We'll talk about those in the news roundup. We're going to get to Toxitron now. We uh So compared to Scourge, this one is much more accurate to the original design. It still uses translucent windshields on the chest, which the whole th thing of G2 Prime is that he never had translucent windows for the chest. That's always been an incorrect detail on every version of this figure so far, which is a little bit annoying, but everything else seems to be much closer to the original design than Scourge was. So I'm going to take it for, I'm going to take it for that and be, and be happy with it. Uh, it's, it is certainly Toxitron, and it's nice to see that he is on the design he was originally meant to be, finally, after all these years. Uh, yeah, I, I do like the neon green and purple combined. I always like that color scheme. Uh, yep, ni nice truck mode. This is, again, not one that I jump at, but I might grab if I see it on clearance, because uh, I did get Scourge on clearance, so I know it's possible. It's But this one's on... Because this one is so much more like connected to a fan base, like at general retail, I'm pretty sure this is going to be pretty easy find. Online orders, this is going to evaporate. That's my prediction right now. Um, I kind of wish the truck had done a little bit more, but I can understand why they wouldn't want to throw too much paint onto it. But it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's Toxitron. What can I say? Uh, but it is it's cool. It's a really it's a really cool way of finally getting that deco out. Even if he's not typically technically G2, he is a universe 1.0 deco that never came out, but he definitely fits uh definitely fits especially with the theme. And then there's one we got to see, but for whatever reason all we got is the box, which is super annoying and that is Grimlock. Grimlock was the one we got leaked. We found out there was a G2 Grimlock on the way, and in my heart of hearts, I was hoping for the blue. I know that would be a boring redeco because it's just changing the gray for blue, but that's the Grimlock I had in G2. But no, they are doing the Tiger Stripe, again, with the unreleased deco that only appeared in artwork form. This is amazing. 
This one is more popularly known these days as uh, Greymon Grimlock because it is orange with blue striping to it. It's a very Greymon color scheme to the point where I would be, I would genuinely be upset if someone didn't release some kind of third-party Greymon helmet to wear for the Dino Mode to wear. I'm 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 genuinely expecting that uh, accessory to happen. Uh, I really wish I got to see what this thing looked like out of the box. Really wish I got to see it because it's like I want to see if the head color is correct. I want to see how the striping looks in the in the T Rex mode. This one is lacking. This one, this one, like this one is like a teaser, and it's bugging me. So I was going to include this in a news roundup when this first dropped because this is all we got. It's just some preview photos, but we did get more. We did get more because someone found listings. And the listings include ones that we didn't see yet. So in these listings, we have a uh, package refresh of Shadow Strip, who's going to be the least toxic looking one in the whole line. One listing for G2 Dead End, who I hope is just a placeholder name for the very least. If you're going to rename Drag Strip to Shadow Strip, I really do hope you at least keep the names of this G2 Stunticons as something new. You know, at the very least, you know, at the very least, like, put some kind of original spin on it. Uh, but, like, G2 Dead End is, like, super bright yellow. So this is a really good, this is a really good line to, to get away with releasing Dead End. Uh, G2 Mirage, who you can see here, and this is the one I'm actually looking forward to. Oh, I know. It's super garish. It's super garish with the pink and the green. I love it. I love, I love this. I love this, like, watermelon looking robot. I love this, like, this robot who looks like he's made of, like, kids chewing gum from the 90s. This is my kind of garish. I love it. And it's not because I'm a Floridian and he has alligators running down the side of him. That That's stereotyping me. Don't give me more credit than that. I just, I just really like how like overtly garish it is. And I love like I have a BotCon Action Master Thundercracker uh, from that Deluxe Classics mold. He will go very well with this Mirage. I this name this is again one that should not be named Mirage. He should be named like the opposite of Mirage, like eyesore. Like this should be be something completely different. If anything needs to be a different character, it's that one because he's definitely not miraging anything. And then G two Sideswipe. I know everyone got excited. Ooh, the Marvel comic one with all like the spikes and all the guns and belt straps. No, 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 no. Unreleased Decos. You're not getting the black and red one. You're getting this one. You're getting the yellow with the blue internal parts. It's got the sunset print on the side and the chest. That's the one you're going to get. All right. And I don't think that's a bad one either. These days it kind of runs into uh, Tiger Track, but it's what it is. Um, I do think it's hilarious that this is the idea. And like I said, it is very much like a BotCon inspired idea. Now, we've talked about canceled G2 toys in the past, so that is something that, like, we can retread a little bit of that to see what else might be coming in a, in a hypothetical Wave 2. Uh, that would go with your, like, your G2 Swoop, who is in bright green and blue. We do know there is a Studio Series Swoop on the way. Uh, I mean, I hope so. They've done the other four. It'd be stupid to stop now. And that's just me wanting my favorite Dinobot in my favorite color. That's what that is. Uh, but we know they're using the Seeker Mold, which leads us to Blackout here, which was Black Death Starscream for the longest time, because that was what was written across the vehicle mode. Uh, but now uh, retroactively been named Blackout, so that one is a potential if they want to break that out. Also potential is the Jungle Camo Starscream, again, one that I really hope would have a different name if it actually did get released. Uh, and the other one would be Sludge, um, if they're doing unreleased Dinobots. That'd be weird to do three G2 Dinobots and not do uh, Snarl and Slag, but that's, you know, they, they didn't really have unreleased color schemes. They had a bunch of colors to pick from, but, you know, they were pretty much them. Do, like, the green Slag as Slug, obviously, and the red Snarl, and do it as, like, a, like... Yeah, you know, like a budgeted two pack since it's mostly since you're just changing out one plastic color. Do like a budget like hundred dollar two pack for the two at like Christmas time because it's very Christmassy when you pair the two. So 
that's what we have to look forward to. But I think people are kind of forgetting what this means. Um, we we're going to cover that really briefly. And that is the fate of Velocitron. So along with this announcement, the Hot Rod figure that has long since been in question about how it was going to be released finally dropped on Walmart.com and then immediately sold out. So we are going to see, uh, yeah, this is going to be like another Galaxy Shuttle situation where if you're in the UK, there's probably a wall of them somewhere at a local store. But for everyone else in the world and in the US, yeah, good luck getting a hold of one. I, I can kind of foresee that happening with this hot rod as well. But it also means that what what was a promising uh what was a promising capsule line that I that could have continued did get cut really short, which is unfortunate for everyone who's looking forward to Galaxy Shuttle, because that one was super short production. Really up bad, really bad for anyone who was after Crasher. Because I think that's a landmark Transformer figure, at the very least, you know, for the historical aspects of it. And that's probably going to remain like a super limited thing now. And that's unfortunate. Like, I hope just like Cos, you know, and I think a lot of people are hoping for Wave 2 to see a Cosmos uh, refresh. Uh, that's going to have to wait, apparently. So uh, that's, yeah. Um, I'm admittedly like I'm only like ha I was only, like I really like the idea of Velocitron, especially because it's Cybertron based. But also, let's admit there's a lot in there that was kind of underwhelming. A lot of that didn't fit the race theme very well. Um, burnout, I'm sorry, I don't imagine like a minivan as something I'm going to be driving down a racetrack. <sighs> That's how that goes. So hopefully this line does better because I do think like there's plenty more in G2 they could do, even if they have to go to stuff that was released. There's plenty of garish G2 out there in the world. And there's some personal favorites I would love to see if they could get around to it. So that's going to do it for me today. Um, I'm kind of interested and excited in this line. Nothing is really like jumping out at me except, well, I, I would say nothing. But like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to need that because that jumps out at anybody. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of this line and who you would ex hope to come back. If they're doing like a G2 revival line, what is your hope for a wave two? Um, very hypothetical, remember. Um, but this is one to discuss, so discuss it in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm, and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.